taking much time let us pray father we are grateful we say thank you for your loving kindness your mercies and your blessings thank you because you care thank you for your grace where would we be without the grace of god and therefore this evening this afternoon we recommit our lives to you lord we once again surrender and we pray that you may have your way with us teach us father to hear your voice and not just to hear your voice but also to respond as you want us to for we thank you in jesus name amen we want to continue with the, what we started last week or even the, the week before that these questions that are coming from god and um last week we started considering the um the story of of cain and um god talking with cain asking him why are you angry we saw that god cares so much for emotional health and how um we are feeling and so it's a concern for him i think we have been taught in a way our our theology you know i have to admit our theology many times is very upside down especially when it comes to our our mental health you know our theology is very good when it comes to uh, the issues of obedience and other um, spiritual things but when it comes to our mental health we find it lacking in many ways but we find the affirmation that God cares for how we feel as, as we see God coming and asking why are you angry the Bible says God gave him a way out told him if you do well will you not be accepted and if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and it desires for you, but you should rule over it, you should overcome it. Now, when someone gives you some advice, someone gives you a way out, someone says to you, I see where the problem is, but I got a solution for you. This is a person who means well for you. And the least you can do is to engage with the person. That's the least you can do. You can even say, well, I hear you, but what you're telling me is not something I'm willing to do for now or I'm unable to do it for now but the worst thing that you can never do is to be rude and not engage and we find Cain so rude that he does not even engage with God uh, you know I can just pause there and just ask us this question you know when we think about God god is always looking to engage with us he's looking for every opportunity he can get to interrupt or even invade our lives if we let him however many of us have the problem of ignoring god sometimes we don't do it um, because of being rebellious sometimes we do it because we are too busy or we just say, well, he's God, he's full of love. You know, once I get myself together, we can engage. Or once once I finish what I'm doing, it's, it's a simple thing as when we get up in the morning, our first thought, our first thing, I mean, the moment your, 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 your feet, you know, hit the ground, the next thing that should be following is your knees to pray. Thank you, God. I'm in my right mind. Thank you, God. I'm in good health. Thank you. Give me direction for the day. But how many times do we keep that uh, away for some time? You know, you know, I'll I'll have some time with God later on in the day. You know, I'm kind of too busy right now. It's too late, and then we ignore God. Instead of talking to God, Cain, the Bible says, spoke to his brother, and actually we find him lying to his brother. And they go to a field, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him fratricide the first instance of homicide in scripture was brother against brother the first instance of we can call this genocide because this man killed 25 percent of the population of the world at that time it was brother against brother i i have two points to make number one is it any wonder that the biggest beef that people have the biggest chaos the biggest conflict that people have is not with people who are outside the family it is within the family the biggest conflict 
if you think about it the thing that brings so much anger and churns all this bitterness and makes you at times even to doubt whether you are a christian or whether you're even a normal person is not because of what has been done by your colleagues at work or by uh, your classmates it's by what has been done by family and you know it's a catch-22 situation because number one um there is nothing you can do about family family is family amen you did not choose family god chose the family for you the bible says god places the lonely in families so god chose who's to be your brother god chose was to be your sister he chose your parents he chose your siblings he chose your cousins he chose your uncles he chose he chose all of that and there is no coming out you know you can always drop off some friends with time you can always drop off some colleagues when you get fired from the job or you resign and move to another job or if it's a an, uh, an annoying classmate you know your course is coming to an end but you're stuck with family and satan knows since you are stuck with family number one since it is god's plan for you to have this as your siblings your brothers your sisters your relatives and there's no coming out he brings the worst cases of chaos and conflict in families and we have to be on guard friends we have to be on guard because how the enemy works is by instigating and planting the seeds of bitterness bitterness is probably one of the worst things that can ever uh, invade the life of a Christian or even just any individual the Bible warns us against bitterness Cain was a farmer but it seems the only seeds that he was very successful at planting were the seeds of bitterness you know if we are to be honest today and I don't need you to answer this question um, right now to me but definitely you should think about it what are you bitter about are you bitter about your past are you bitter about your present? Are you bitter uh, because of people in your life? And the worst kind of bitterness is the one that we harbor against God. God, it's your fault. This should not have happened this way. God, why did you allow this? And as long as those feelings of bitterness continue to fester, my friend, they will block everything and anything in your life. The first thing that bitterness will do, it will poison your worship. It poisons your worship. In the book of Acts, we find Simon the magician coming to Peter and says, Please also give me this, this, this power, this, this Holy Spirit that I can do what you're doing. And what a wonderful prayer that we are praying for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But Peter looked into this man and he said to him, I can see that you are bound in iniquity and bitterness. There's a bitterness in you. Bitterness will block your worship. And once it blocks your worship, you have no connection with God. And then, of course, it will block your blessings. Bitterness will poison your destiny. And this bitterness will come from the issue of comparing yourself with other people. We find Cain having that problem. He compared himself with his brother. A story is told, uh, of course it's a fable, that there was a, um, a rat one day. The rat saw um, a cat and the cat came and attacked uh, some rats and killed and ate them. And this rat was amazed. It ran to um, the magician and said to the magician, please, could you transform me and make me to be a cat? And the magician transformed this cat in, in this right to be a cat and then after some point you know this cat now watched in amazement as a dog came and killed a cat and so this this cat ran back to the magician please can you make me to be a dog and of course it was transformed it became a dog and then of course you know it saw the dog being killed uh, by a lion and then of course after some time it saw uh, uh, the lion of, of course you know um, it, ran to the magician make me to be a lion and then he saw the lion being killed by an elephant 
And so he went back to the magician and said, please make me to be an elephant. The magician looked at this man and said, uh, this, 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 um, this, this lion, and looked at the lion and said, you know, I can transform you to be an elephant. But the problem you have is that you still have the heart of a rat inside of you. And this is what causes the, the many problems. Instead of looking at the blessings that God has given us, we discount all those blessings and we are still chasing and looking longingly at what God has done for somebody else. We are comparing ourselves with what God has done for individual A, B, C, and D. But we forget that the plan that God has for your life is individualized. No one can be you. No one can fit into your destiny, just you. And God says, for I know the thoughts, the plans that I have for you, singular. So this man goes, kills his brother. And then God, again, we find him in his mercy, continues to come after this man. And he says to him, Cain, where is Abel, your brother? In other words, God is saying, I don't care that you have these feelings of bitterness. I don't care that you have conflict. I don't care there's, there's this man, uh, misunderstanding. What I'm asking is, where is your brother? Where is your brother? Where is your sister? Where are your relatives? Cain responds in a very rude manner again and this is what happens that when we harbor this bitterness even when we're in the presence of God we still do not realize the blessings that are in store for us he says I don't know of course you know now you're lying I don't know am I my brother's keeper yes you are and then God follows him again what have you done what have you done you see, God is not asking because he doesn't know. He's inviting Cain to uh, go through a season of reflection. To meditate, to find out where he stands. Especially between him and his God. What have you done? Tells him the, the, the blood of your brother is crying out from the ground. God throughout in this narrative has been trying not to get to this point he's been trying not to get to verse 11 all through by asking these questions why are you angry if you do well where's your brother what have you done god is restraining himself from getting to verse 11 what is in verse 11 it is the judgment what is in verse 11 it is the condemnation and all through we find god talking to us trying to prevent himself from getting to a place of judgment or condemnation. God will first come to you with grace. God will first come to us with mercy. God will first come to us with a way out. It's only when we spur him off that judgment and condemnation becomes our lie. So God tells him, so now you are cursed from the earth, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground shall no longer yield its strength to you, a fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on earth. That's a terrible judgment. That sentence uh, has been given. What do you expect Cain to do? If I'm Cain, I'm falling on the ground and saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I have sinned. Forgive me. I pray for another chance. And many of us are in that situation where we are living through judgment. And instead of falling on our feet, say, God, please forgive me. Oh, God, I pray, give me a second chance to become like Pharaoh, who continued to harden his heart. Well, Pharaoh has his brother or has his role model, who is Cain, because what does Cain do? And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Come on, Cain. Surely you have driven me out of this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. I want to ask this question today as we come to the close. 
what do you think was this mark of Cain? You can put it in the chat or you can just um, um, unmute yourself. What do you think? I'm not asking for the right answer, but I'm, I'm asking for your opinion. What do you think was this mark of Cain? God said, I want to put a mark on you. I've heard people say, well, God made him grow uh, an extra eye. Others have said, well, he grew like a horn uh, in the midst of, of uh, you know, his head. Um, and another say, you know, other people say, you know, he became so tall, uh, whatever it is. But friends, um, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Whatever it is, uh, Sister Docker says was a sign of the cross. Whatever it is, um, I got to tell you, we don't know what it was. But Nancy has it right. It was a mark of grace. The significance of it was that God is saying, Cain, I want to put this mark on you so no one will kill you before your time. Cain, I'm putting this mark on you so you don't have to die before repenting. God is saying, Cain, I'm putting this mark just so with hope I am hoping that maybe at some point down the road you'll come to your senses and repent and not have to be lost forever. God didn't have to give this man any mark to extend his life for this man was a killer for this man was a genocide uh you know the guy who did genocide the first genocide but god still extends his grace and say i'll put a mark that even though you have killed you wouldn't be killed i've put a mark on you even though you're a murderer you will not be murdered friends don't we appreciate this god who puts his mark on us? It's a mark of grace. He extends our time. You know, were it not for this grace, none of us should have been here. The accidents that should have happened this week, uh, the many problems that should have come your way, all the things that God has stopped from happening to you and to me. Why? He's giving us yet another opportunity to see whether we're going to get it right with him. May we take advantage of what God is doing and may we hear those questions and those questions, may they cause us to meditate and reflect on where we stand, especially with our God. Let us pray, whoever is going to give the closing prayer, pray that bitterness will not find its place in our hearts. And if there's any bitterness, it will be uprooted by the Holy Spirit together with the roots, be uprooted completely. That it will no longer have a place in our hearts. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen.